Hello everyone, my name's Louise Garman. I'm an artist and I teach art and workshops. I trained at Chelsea College of Art in London many moons ago, also at the Royal Academy and Slade School of Art. And today I'm going to give you a lesson in watercolour painting. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you're a more advanced student, because the thing with watercolour is to practice, practice, practice. Um, you do the same thing over and over and over until you get the, capture the skills that you need. Now, watercolour is a very difficult medium. If you're using acrylic or oil and the painting dries and it's wrong, you can go over it again. But with watercolour, once you've laid the watercolour on the paper, it's extremely difficult, if nigh on impossible, to change it. So it's a very immediate um, type of medium to use. Now, there are different kinds of watercolour. Some are like the artist Dura, where they're very highly detailed, like birds and animals, and they're highly, highly detailed using tiny, tiny brushes. Or, if there's the opposite to that, which is similar to, let's say, a Turner painting. So I've got a picture of a Turner painting here. And as you can see, it's very loose, wet washes with a little bit of detail on it. So we're going to attempt this more, more this type of style than the other. I'm not saying we're going to do a Turner, but we're going to give it a good shot. Now then what you're going to need. You're going to need your brushes. I've got a lot, a lot of brushes, but I like the wider flat brush and the tiny, tiny pointed detail brush. Uh, you're going to need a pencil just in case, watercolour paper, cup of water, I am putting some kitchen roll here just in case. I've got a sponge. And this is, because I'm at home at the moment, this is a kitchen sponge. So if you want, you can cut it in half and don't use the hard I'm at emery side. Use the soft side and literally just cut it in half like I have done. Make it small, but keep it to one side just in case you need it. I've got a plate, like a palette, and I've got my watercolours. Now, here I'm using the tube, but if you've got a palette of colours, it's just as good, if maybe just a little bit easier as well, to use the palette of all the little blocks of colours. I've also got here some pencils which are very similar to the watercolour pencils that you can buy, where you draw the line and then you add colour wash, you add wash to it and water to it and it blends out. These are actually ink um, pencils, similar to watercolour pencils. Okay, so that's the equipment that you're going to need. And if I was you, I'd lay it all out in front of you so you're ready to use it. Okay. So, the subject matter we're going to do is skies, water, and maybe some clouds. And in the foreground, we're going to pretend we're on a Caribbean cruise and we're going to do palm trees or a boat in the foreground. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get some colour out. And I'm going to use a yellow here. It's only a pale yellow. And I've got some orange, a little bit of orange. And then a touch of purple. Now don't forget, if you suddenly want to throw blue in there, the yellow is going to mix with the blue and it's going to make green. So be careful how you use it. Now this one we're going to do, we're going to use a lot of water. So mix your yellow. And prepare yourself, put the brush down. You're going to take your sponge 
wet it, squeeze the excess water out, and literally just wet the paper. Try not to do too much, but if you do, you'll see what will happen. Colours will spread everywhere. Okay, take your brush of colour and just start at the bottom with the yellow. Keep it nice and loose. Water. I'm going to add a little bit of orange now and a bit of orange into the yellow. Then I'm going to add the orange and you'll see it'll all blend in beautifully like a Caribbean sunset. Then you look, keep it going up the page and then I want you to mix a little bit of purple in there. Lots of water. And just add, add your purple at the top. And you'll see, I've created, it's quite delicate this one actually, it's turned out quite delicate, but there we are. I can't really hold it up properly because the colour will drip, but I've created a background for our landscape. Okay, so that one can be tossed to one side at the moment. Remember, we're doing wet on wet, so wet another piece of paper. Let's do another one. I think I'm going to... Repeat that, but let the colours blend in in a little more free way. There we go. But don't be frightened of making a bit of a mess. It really doesn't matter, because you'll find with watercolour it looks beautiful, it all blends in. There we go. I'm going to add some more yellow at the bottom to make it a little bit brighter. right across the page and strangely enough with watercolour the quicker you work the better it works somehow there we go so I've done another one to practice on there we go done another one to practice on put that down add a little bit more colour we're going to do three backgrounds so we can practice on three background colours. So I've done again, I've done the yellow, orange and purple blending in. Take your big brush, wet the paper. This time I'm going to wet it the other way, see what happens. And rather than doing straight across, I'm going to be a bit looser with it. Do a bit of yellow at the top as well. A few streaks of yellow. And take my orange. Let it blend in. Some water, more water. Let it all blend together. And lastly, the purple running across. And I'm actually going to allow this to do its own thing because it's quite wet. So I'm going to let it let it blend together and make those lovely marks on the paper. Can you see it's dripping a bit? It actually was quite nice. Okay, that I'm going to set to one side as, as well. Now the next kind of background we're going to do is dry brush. So do as it says, take a um, dry brush on a dry piece of paper. And we're going to use a cloth or your sponge so that it's not very wet like it was last time. It's kind of a dry, 
across, running across the page. And you'll see it's more of a texture that you'll see on your paper. Now, if you're practicing, you don't need to use watercolour paper. You can use any paper. You can use a cartridge paper, anything you want, just to practice. Then when you're ready to do your final piece, then take out your watercolour paper because it's expensive, isn't it? Try and whip, wipe off the excess and then do your dry brush across the page. And lastly, with your purple, get the purple on the brush, take off the excess and you'll see it, it blends in with the texture of the paper. And you'll have a different type of background with that one. There we go. So now you've got four backgrounds for your final piece. Now what I was going to do is do palm tree. So we can either do one palm tree or we can do two coming in together with the sunset in the background. So I'm going to take my first sheet of paper. Which I won't, I'll take my second one, it's a bit drier. Now, if you want to, you can use a pencil and mark in the palm trees very, very lightly. Don't do it heavy because you can see everything you do on the watercolour. If you draw a heavy pencil mark, when you watercolour over it, you'll still see the pencil mark. Um, so very delicately, you can draw maybe two of the trunks of the palm trees. Then I'm going to take my very fine brush and I'm actually going to mix together some of these colours. Still going to use the same colours. And literally, I'm going to do palm tree coming over like that. It'll partly blend in actually with the background, which is rather nice. A little bit of ground there. And then I'm going to flick the brush on. One, two, three, four, Five. and then we're going to do the leaves One, two, three. like this see how I'm doing it I'm flicking the brush a little bit more paint so it is blending into the background but actually it looks rather nice as I'm doing it There we go. If you want to make it a little bit heavier or darker, you can do. Use less water for the trunk. There we go, there's a bit more shadow there. And literally, just let it dry. Leave it to dry. Okay, we're going to put that to one side. And grab another background piece that you've done. If you want to do a boat, let's say, in the foreground, let's keep it simple. I've got one from this book here. You see, I've got this one from a book. It's complicated, but I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to draw, you should just draw the line of the boat, the central line of the boat. Actually, just keep it simple like that. Put my pencil down, mix my colours. I like to use the um, tip of the brush and the full width of the brush as well. Yeah. 
put a detail. Obviously, I need to spend more time on it. So I'm just giving you a fearless way of jumping in. There we go. There we go. So even now, as quickly as this, we've produced one landscape or one seascape with a palm tree and one with a boat on it. And the thing with this is to just practice and practice, blend the colours, make a mess, don't be frightened, whether you're a beginner or advanced, to loosen up and do some free, beautiful paintings that you can work on at a later date. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy following my lesson. Have a go yourself and hopefully see you on a beautiful cruise very, very soon. Thank you.